All right, welcome back to Blue by 90. I'm Justin, joined by Tanner and Kaylin today. It's been a bit. It's been a bit for, for us I'm on the it. pod here, um, especially Kaylin, for sure. Um, I mean, this is kind of like there's so much going on in Michigan athletics, but it's also like a downtime at the same time. It's kind of a weird time, but um, excuse me. It's good to be back. Um, I'm excited. I'm going to be honest. I am straight up eating like a 22-ounce cowboy steak currently. Um, it's incredible. Um, just there are times as a man – where I was like going through bushes today and I was like, should I like, you know, eat some chicken, uh, get a salad? And I was like, you know what? I need some raw red meat. I, I need some meat on my bones. I do feel like Coach Harbaugh would be proud of me. You know what he says about chicken? It's a nervous bird. So you made the right choice. I did. I do I, bit, like I, I do miss though. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm married, right? And yep. I love my wife, but I kind of do miss just, like, going to a grocery store with, like, nothing planned, and I'm like, what can I get into tonight? You I mean, I mean? I, like, I, like, what movie can I watch, and, like, what ridiculous meal can I make myself? <laughs> do you remember those, I, like, Hungry Man dinners? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. Solid. It was a revolutionary for that, that was, time. Honestly, Tanner, that's exactly what I did tonight. I had zero plan of what I – and, like – I needed – I had no food at the house, so I, like, needed something for tonight. Um, I will say I get caught up doing that. And then, like, I'm like, oh, well, I also need, like, a snack, you know, while I'm making dinner, too. And yeah. then all of a sudden – Some Sour Patch Kids for later. Yeah. You right, know, I need right. a couple yeah. – I need a couple – Sugar free Gatorades, like it just, and then you know, with with how expensive everything is, man. Anytime I go to Kroger or Meyer, it ends up being like I'm like doing the math, and I'm like, damn, bro, it's gonna it be was over a hundred bucks today. It was yeah, it, I mean, it happens. <laughs> like I didn't get that much. I didn't. It's get cheaper that to much. just go out to eat. It's a classic guy move too. I need to get some dinner. What I get? How about some steaks? I mean, it was easy. just like, yeah, it's so easy, and I'm pan I sear. couldn't be happier right now. Oh, could not be happier. Um, but. We had some downs over the weekend for Michigan athletics, but honestly, if you're talking like majority, great weekend, unbelievable weekend. Where should we start it, Tanner? Get us get us going here. So my wife will be proud of this because she loves college wrestling. I think we have to start with the national championship. Mason Paris at 285, the heavyweight class, uh, won a national championship, took down, I believe, the number two ranked wrestler in his weight class from Penn State on Saturday. Just super happy for him. I've seen him wrestle a number of times, and I've actually seen him wrestle outside of Ann Arbor more than I have at Cliff Keen Arena uh, because I've seen him wrestle at Nebraska a couple of times. The kid's been a monster his whole career. He would have multiple national titles, multiple Big Ten championships if it wasn't for Gable Stevenson, who is a generational wrestler in the same weight class from Minnesota, who won a gold medal and is now in the WWE. So just super stoked for Mason Paris to get a national championship. I actually don't know the last individual champion Michigan's had. Uh, but this is a program you had 33 and 0, right? Yeah. Undefeated uh, kid from Indiana outside of Indianapolis. I mean, the kid's a monster probably could have played division one college football as well. It was a defensive lineman in high school. I saw Steve Wiltfong from 24 seven mention that. Um, so just an awesome experience to, to be able to see a, you know, Michigan hang a banner. Essentially it's not a team championship, but you know, one of the most impressive seasons for, for any Michigan wrestler in history to go undefeated, and uh, some of the guys he took down on, on his way to a championship, it's an extremely impressive season for him. So it was awesome, man, to see, see a natty. He, um, he trains uh, out of our office uh, at Valiant with um, – uh, uh, his name is Amir Rad, who trains a lot of guys. JJ trains a lot of different uh, athletes. And um, he was telling me he's only like 250-something. First of all, I can't – sometimes he looks like he's absolutely shredding. He should be like 225. Other times he looks like he's 280, um, but the, his that weight class, I mean the heavyweights, you can you can go up to 285, mm -hmm. and he's he's only 250, so he is like he he's wrestling some bigger bigger boys than him. Um, no, just incredible, good dude too, and I mean just awesome to see. Love Coach Barmet for the wrestling uh, program as well. How do you think you guys would fare in a wrestling match? No, with him. You, Roe versus Tanner. Oh, oh, oh! I mean, I don't know, man. I never wrestled, I, so I don't know that we're in the same weight class. <laughs> yeah, we got a, you know, we we got a little bit know. of lbs. So, 
I don't know. I'm, 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 you know, we're, you know, just just in the way that you're just splurging on food. I mean, we've got meal, we got meals for the next two weeks, and they're all healthy. And right. you know, so I'm, I, you know, I may show up looking like you for football season. Like I might just show up with That's some true. khakis, quarter zip, and you don't even know who's who. <laughs> Trim the beard down a little bit, you know. Uh, but I, I, I think Kalen to answer your question that Tanner would whoop my ass. That's what I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't want to though. Like I'd feel bad. Oh, wow, doing it, that's you know? nice of you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. I try to look out for my friends. I don't want to. Usually, when them. Jack's on, like I sometimes like literally want to strangle him through the computer. It depends on what he says, but I could probably be convinced. Like if we have some beers, like at some point this summer, like I'm sure we could probably see if Jack and I get into it a little bit. See what's going Ooh, on. That would be fun. If, what if? Because he's got leverage. Wait, now that he's since he's not on this uh, this episode, can we just plan to like kick his ass someday this summer? <laughs> just beat the piss out of him. Just yeah, like, like like he has no nowhere. idea it's coming. Like, he, you know, we'll all just be in a really good mood drinking beers, and then I come and just tackle the shit out of him, and you start like you just lay on yeah. him, and you just start <laughs> pounding on him. No, he'll he'll like make a comment about something that I said. Like he'll make a joke about when I said I wanted a something light, and I got a hazy IPA. And he'll he'll just say it, and I'll just like it, I'll just flip, and I'll just start beating the shit out of him. Yeah. I'm voting <laughs> for for full on cage match. I'll take some bets. Like I would love that. Ron Robin. I've been or I'm not gonna lie. I've been like I've been waiting to beat the shit out of Jack for a few years now. To be honest with you. Or we could have. I don't know if you guys were in the direct vicinity, but when we were walking back to go tailgate before the Big Ten Championship, Jack is like past proing across the street, like kick sliding. <laughs> I did like, do that like 30 that? consecutive feet for no reason. So maybe we just get some one on one O line drills for Jack and just see if we can get to a dumb a tackling dummy. You know, with a little wide, uh, I like little, that a little wide pass rush. You know, I like push that pull. I that like could be that fun. Um, we should do a blue by ninety combine. Ooh, we've we already should. talked about it, and that would be we're all pretty lecture. sure it's gonna be a lot of injuries. <laughs> yeah. That's well, true. we did do a kicking competition with Brad Robbins and Jake Moody uh, behind the scenes. We never even released the the film because um, they beat us so bad. And Jack walked away with like a broken foot. Like that's not a joke. Like he was injured <laughs> from just kicking a ball. It wasn't like oh he pulled a hammy. It was contact with a regular <laughs> football. Like hurt him so badly. Uh, we should so, stop. We should stop ripping on Jack though, because he has a Nike discount that I need to use soon. Ooh, so we yeah, should, that's true. That's true. Let's cut this, but not. He did, um, yeah, he did hook me up with uh, with some shoes, and I do want another pair. So. Yeah. Um, I'm trying Jack, to get some Air Forces. So, Jack, like, if you're listening, we're like, we're totally kidding, dude. We this is this is so fake, dude. If you're listening yeah. on Spotify right now, this is I we're completely fucking with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, um, so back to Michigan athletics. Uh, we what do we have? Uh, gymnastics, right? Men's and women's. Men's and women's gymnastics. How do we, I? I'm sorry, I honestly missed it. How do we end up? Big Ten champs, right? Big Ten champs. Both, I both believe both regular I season. Yeah, Big Ten champs. Yeah, bro. I don't. I, I, mean, I would tear my it's like thinking about how to attempt some of those things that they're doing. No, I mean, what I couldn't. First of all, I couldn't hang on the bar for more than like probably ten seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Second of all, they they're flipping so fast. I don't. I'll never understand this. And I'm a, like, I'm a skier. And, like, I have friends that do flips and stuff, and I, I can do, like, a 180 sometimes. Like, I've, I think I've landed a couple 360s in my life. Um, I don't understand how they know where they are in the air or during one of those tricks. No. I'd be like Ricky Bobby and just, like, I'm flying through the air. This is not good. Like, I – no spatial I, awareness. I, and then they just, like, come down onto the mat. And it's like, oh, I'm perfect, and I'm just going to stop moving. How do you stop your momentum so fast? I don't understand it. Physically, like, I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't know too much about gymnastics in the first place. But, I mean, it's 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 when you watch it, it's like it, – it is kind of mind-boggling, like, how they even come up with the the way that they can do that. Like, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they're it's, all, it's like, wild. athletic specimens for sure. Yeah, LSU gymnastics as well. Just shout out. No reason. <laughs> <laughs> Just I like their colors. 
I no, nah, yeah, 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 purple, yeah, purple and gold, man. Um, you know who I don't like from LSU is their basketball team, women's basketball team, though. Oh, I don't like. Uh, their, I don't like. What's her name? Kim. How do you say her last name? They're, they're about their head coach for the women's team. Coach. Yeah, she's yeah, not a fan. No, and that Reese girl was. She was just too good, too big and too good. I didn't like her for that reason. Um, yeah, great season yeah. for the ladies on the hardwood, but I mean, it just it, it just seems like if you're not a top two, three, four seed, it's just kind of shocked. It's hard. It's hard. Um, I mean, also your play. Uh, their head coach said this in their locker room after the game. The LSU that was they broke a record for men's or women's capacity for that game. They like sold out the place that had the most people there for any men's or women's basketball game, which is nuts because like Shaquille O'Neal played there. So that's true. Um, well, they I don't know if you were watching that game, but the environment was loud as shit, and it was it was really impressive. But here's the thing I'll say about women's basketball: before Kim Barnes and Rico, we weren't even sniffing like the NIT as a program, no, and not even close. now. A sweet 16 is like the standard and it's really hard. As you said, Tanner to like break through in women's basketball because it's hard there. There just aren't as many top recruits. And so for them to disperse, it's really difficult. And I think she's done a phenomenal job. And like, I know that we all obviously are striving for a championship and stuff like that, but she has reset the standard the same way that John Beeline did at Michigan, where, um, you, you, you know, you don't, uh, you, you, you're disappointed with, uh, like not making it to the elite eight, which is just a great spot to be in. I mean, women's b ball has just been dynasties from my understanding for the longest time. Like, mm-hmm. what is it? UConn and maybe a couple other schools. Yeah. Like- I mean, you had Stan, you know, Stanford's always good. I mean, Stanford's always great in non-revenue sports, right? Like, just because of the degree and the prestige of Stanford. I mean, Notre Dame was always good at – well, at least when I was a kid, I remember they were always good. You know, South Carolina with Dawn Staley is right up there as well. UConn's kind of – it's funny we say this. UConn's kind of fallen off, but that just means they're only going to the Final Four, not going 39-0, and winning it all, and winning 100 straight games. But right. obviously UConn's there. I mean, Baylor, which is where LSU's coach came from. Baylor had a really good program for a while. So, uh, But, yeah, I mean, the talent is just very concentrated. And I think Michigan – has started to get some more elite recruits. So it's going to be fun to, to watch them continue to build the program. KBA has done an awesome job. I mean, the, honestly, before she came to Michigan, the only real memory I have is when their coach, like, had his press conference tirade. Like, I couldn't even tell you what it was about, but I remember it being on SportsCenter yeah. because it was so stupid. He freaked out. And they, like, I think it was in the, like, women's NIT or something. I don't even know, but it was – I. That was like what Michigan women's basketball was famous for was that coach tirade until KBA came. And now they're like known for a pretty solid program. So that's solid. I mean, let's talk about uh, men's hoops for a minute. I'm not going to talk about it a ton because like, to be honest, there's just not a lot of good to say. Like it's, I mean, it was hard to watch. And like the ending of that season, I it was so on par for the whole season. So storybook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have one good thing to say about the men the men's basketball program at the University of Michigan. The 2022-2023 season is over. And we don't have to watch that train wreck anymore. Thank God. It was just like it was it was almost Detroit Lions esque of like, how are we gonna do it this time? How are how is it gonna like what, but it was what just the same game every time. Like, we're up nine, th- four minutes left, and we're going to blow this somehow. And it was I, the same. I, mean, I feel like was, I was watching reruns. It was shocking somehow. And, like, I, that last one, I mean, I haven't been, like, that disengaged in, like, a postseason Michigan basketball game in a while, obviously for, for obvious reasons, right? But, like, I still was – I was, like, laughing in the back of my head. I was just like – this can't be real. <laughs> it's like, it really is like those lions games where you're like, all right, we've got it. How are we going to blow this? Like, and then, then it happens. And, you know, I will say I want to defend like some of the guys because there were social media. When you, when those things happen is tough and like 
they're 21 years old, <laughs> you know? And so that's where, like, I'll defend those guys to the death of, like, just in the fact that they're humans and they're good kids. And, like, I like, I guess that – that part a lot of the time pisses me off about fan bases and I've been a culprit like in my you know own right at times too but like you have to remember that they want to win way more than you ever want to win like they care a lot it means they went to all the practice this this summer you didn't you know you Mm -hmm. just tuned in on Tuesdays and Saturday nights or whatever so that's what honestly I wanted to say about Michigan basketball I still believe in Juwan Howard We've got a great recruiting class coming in. I hope Kobe Bufkin comes back. I assume Jet Howard is gone. Um, But I think that there's an opportunity that um, that we still can can be good, you know, moving forward. And and the thing is, like, here's the reality of the season as as tough as it was to watch because of all those uh, all those close losses. It's like Nebraska football a little bit, too, where, like, if any number of those goes the other way. We're talking uh, an NCAA t- tournament berth and, you know, then who knows what happens, right? Yeah, you got to win those games, though. I mean, it's – I agree. I mean, it, I agree. We, it, we had that conversation. I mean, if you go back and listen to however many podcasts we've done since since football season ended, we're like, man, that they, you know, just could snag a couple and then they just don't. Um I think that was the most disheartening part of the season was not necessarily the losses. It's the fact that I think I saw they had at least like six or seven games where they had late, like an 85, 90% win probability from ESPN or whoever does those statistics. And it's like, you lose all of them. I mean, you, I mean, we talked, I mean, I mean, dude, every time we hopped on, we would like rehash, like, man, if they just beat Iowa, they just had won this game, if they didn't lose a central and it's like, it just never, like they, they played all those close games. And it's like, yeah, you learn from it and you grow from those, but they didn't. And that's the thing. Like individual players got better. Like right. Kobe burst onto the scene. Doug yeah. McDaniel, I feel extremely confident in his ability to handle the ball, run the offense, take big shots and make big shots. And Hunter was Hunter. I mean, for, for better or for worse, Hunter was really solid this year. Um, I don't I, I think he was probably not as good as is as his sophomore year, but you know, I, but I, I thought think he was like- really good. Here's the end of the day, too. Clayton Safey, I think it was, that put it out. Um, like, Hunter was our by far our best three-point 100%. shooter. Yeah, that's crazy. He, it, like, that's, that's crazy to me that he's by far our best three-point shooter and also, obviously, the guy down low. Like, I I just think, like, you know, I, I don't know how many times you're going to win if you have to rely on one guy for doing all that stuff um, so much. And so – I don't know. I I hope for for better things going forward. I guess I really don't have a whole lot more to say than that. Like I yeah. do think that I agree with you. Like I think you give the benefit of the doubt. It's like the Scott Frost thing. You give the benefit of the doubt, and you're like, all right. Like if you win some of those games, then great. But then at some point you got to win the games, right? So like next year would be like, all right, we gotta like show progress that you can win a tight game when it gets down to the end of it. So, um, as long as, I, as long as Michigan doesn't play Georgia Southern, Juwan will be okay. <laughs> Agreed. And Hunter's Agreed. gone too, right? I don't know. He left I the mean, door open. He left the door open. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Cause I don't know how, what his draft stock is like, you know, even though he's, he's, he's like, he's a kind of a prototypical four year college guy. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah. So uh, that was we'll, his fourth we'll year, though, right? No, 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 his no, third. no, third, yeah. Oh, that's his third. He still has he has two more years if he wants it. He can play. He can years, play. He can play five years. years. Yeah, yeah. Well, damn. It's crazy. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, now with NIL, it actually does like that. Truly changes a lot of things because, especially when you look at the G League, like that NIL paycheck is a lot of times better than a G League paycheck. So oh, he'll play overseas, but then it's like. I mean, be, going overseas is awesome, right? Like going to new cultures and stuff. But then it's like, do I want to live in Ann Arbor for another year with my friends and, you know, his girlfriend's on the track team, I believe. Or do I want to go and play in Europe somewhere, which that'd be an awesome experience. But it's like, you know, if I can get NIL money and, you know, be able to have it be somewhat comparable to, to playing overseas, like you might as well stick it out, you know, I spend mean, one more year in Ann Arbor, get your degree. I mean – See what still happens. Still playing on a big stage, right? Still a lot yeah. of scouts watching you. Yeah, I, I agree with that part too. It's like I've been to G League games, 
not a great environment. <laughs> You're, you don't have a student section chanting against you, which he obviously loves. Um, so, yeah. What's the halftime show like at a G League game? Oh, it's usually like half court shot for like 300 bucks or something like that. I don't know. What G League games have you been to? Grand Rapids Drive back when okay. it was that. Now yeah. they're the VR Gold. Uh, uh, and then the Motor City Drive, I believe. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Fort Wayne Mad Ants guy myself. The Mad Ants is a great organization. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastically run organization. Agreed. Um, I, I like, I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't know. It, I don't, I mean, I don't think if I'm an NBA team, like I'm not using a two way contract on Hunter Dickinson. Like, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean that because I'd rather give it to a kid who I don't really know what their, their potential is. Like Hunter is a finished product, but it's just not what the NBA is looking for. 30 years ago, he's a first round pick. Right. Today, I think he's going to play in Europe. I mean, I don't mean that you can make a lot of money and you can play great basketball in Europe, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't see it yeah. for the NBA. So I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't disagree. I, I think, um, you know, whether here's the thing, whether you like it or not, he's still the most valuable guy to this program. Currently. I want him back. I, I absolutely want him back. So, like, I'd, like, love, I'd love to have him back. I think it's one of those things, in my opinion, where, you know, this, at times it's frustrating to watch because you feel like things could be going a lot better or you're like looking to like grass is, grass is greener type of thing. But like, I think once he does move on, you'll miss being able to just go to Hunter for 22 and 15 right. every night. You know, Reliable. like, I, I think that's that's the case. Things might flow differently. There might be other guys that step up because of it. But, like, at the end of the day, and obviously it didn't work out this year, but there were a lot of times that when Hunter Dickinson, when we're like, hey, we need a bucket, and you just go and he gets a bucket. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an awesome college player. And, and honestly – a lot of the failures of this season are not on Hunter Dickinson at all. I hope nobody's taking that from what I'm saying with regards to his pro prospects. Yeah. But I mean, you're right. We, we, we saw all year Michigan had to go through Hunter Dickinson because they were not getting a lot of production out of the four. There were times they were not getting a lot of production out of the three because there were times when Jet Howard Wait. would go, would go cold. So yeah. it had to go through Hunter. And there was a lot yeah. of times I love Doug McDaniel, but there's a lot of times where, where I did not feel confident in his ability at the one just with no true backup. And then when Kobe had to play point, you weren't getting a lot at the two sometimes. So it had to go through Hunter every single time. And, you know, I thought he delivered, you know, I, I thought he delivered on a lot of what I wanted to see out of him this year. It, it wasn't his fault the, the way the season went. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, you guys like and, his, uh, his three point celebration, the three ness. <laughs> All right, he can lose that. I okay. I let's not show up in a ski mask either. I'm not cool with that. Was stupid. Yeah, but it I, was funny. I did tweet it out again. I'd be fine with saying that to his face as well. Like I'm okay with saying like, "Hey, you, I wouldn't mind if you didn't do your three point celebration anymore." I think I'd be okay with saying that to his face. Yeah, um, that's fair. So, yeah, I I do I you know what else I do? Obviously, March Madness still greatest weekend of the year like oh, sucks so bad when your team's not watching but or not playing but um i do absolutely love watching those games i was downtown detroit at the sports book all night saturday and just like betting on every game it's it's incredible how'd you it's do so much fun. oh not good not good at all <laughs> <laughs> hey you know that's the way she goes sometimes you guys saw my text though <laughs> where i was talking about the quad view on youtube tv yes literally oh. my like friday you know, just chilling, letting loose a little bit, you know, hanging out and just watching the games. And it was the greatest experience of my life because fairly Dickinson's beating Purdue. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, that one's going on in the left corner. And then the right corner, I've got, you know, some random eight, nine game. And I'm like, this is amazing. And then it would go to commercial on the top two and then the bottom two would come back. Like if you, I'm just saying this, if YouTube TV has that figured out to where I can customize and put what game I want on four different screens on my TV. Like it was insane, man. So I really enjoyed the NCAA tournament just because it was like, I literally didn't have to go anywhere. Like I didn't have to go to a sports bar, be around people. So able to chill with my, with my dog and, and Claudia and literally just have all four games on our TV. It was amazing. That's amazing. The way yeah. you do it. <laughs> Shout out um, Google. Love you um, too. I was watching uh, VCU as well. And 
I know they didn't win, but I was sitting there being like, man, Brandon Johns would have been a great four for us this year. <laughs> You're not wrong. I, just, I, I, I had totally I, forgotten about him. And I, then all I, of a sudden he showed up. And Zeb very, Jackson was I, on that team too. And Zeb. I know, Zeb too. I, I But like thinking about like, Man, a super athletic, really great on defense guy who can, you know, occasionally knock down the corner three and pull guys out so you can't double on our on Hunter. That's exactly what we were looking for all year. <laughs> yeah, that or Shawnee Brown. I would have taken oh, Shawnee. Man. On this. Oh, Sha- I would take I, – I've said this every year since he's been gone, and I'll probably say it the rest of my life. I would take Shawnee Brown every time on my team. I love Shawnee Brown. Dude. Like – Go find a Shawnee Brown in the transfer portal. Easier said than done, but give me yeah. a three and D guy that's a microwave that will play his ass off and we'll get the team. Fun. Like I, I miss Shawnee Brown so much, man. I miss. I agree guy. with you because, like, honestly, I don't know. Like, we didn't have that spark plug guy that would mm-hmm. come in for five minutes and play his heart out. Like, that's something somebody that we we're missing. I love Joey Baker. First of all, I should have been starting. Obviously, I think we can we can agree on that. But like, even when he is. Um, um, when he was coming off the bench, he's not like a spark plug guy. You know, he's just like, he, he played really well, but it's just, sometimes you need that guy where it's just like, even if they're like not the most talented, you just need an energy boost. And when somebody else is running their, uh, their ass off around you, then you're going to run your ass off too. Shawnee yeah. Brown forever. Shawnee Brown forever. <laughs> All right. Let's talk football. We've got a spring game coming up in about, what, 11 days, something like that right now. Um, I'm excited. It's it, The reason I'm excited is because I don't know what's happening, but Michigan recruiting is going ballistic right now. And today, what we got the, a four-star running back out of Ohio that is like his grandfather, like is a huge Ohio State fan, and he still picked Michigan. Like, what is happening? I mean, dude, like you think about two, three years ago and Michigan's losing a recruiting battle to Notre Dame for Rocco Spindler because he told his grandpa that he was going to go to Notre Dame. And now we're on the other side of it because Michigan has just beat the crap out of Ohio State for two years and they're literally going into the state of Ohio. Granted, it's Cincinnati, which is, you know, more northern Kentucky to me at least, and I'm sure to a lot of people. But to go into Cincinnati, to go in a top program, a kid that both schools really wanted – He's a top 100 player on the composite to go in there and win that, especially after it was like when it came out, they're like, oh, yeah, he still might visit Ohio State for their spring game. And it was kind of up in the air. And then he just commits out of nowhere. Like that's one of the bigger recruiting wins that I can remember over the last few years. Like definitely the biggest since definitely the biggest in the last two classes for 24 and 23. Well, and there's been so much buzz for like other big guys. Right. I mean, Jaden Davis, right, was just here or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a huge visit a weekend time, this past. and it was like, I mean, when he came uh, pretty much after the visit, the every like message board was like, Hey, every, every, every crystal ball, like upped it's upped it to nine or something like that. And so it feels like it's inevitable at this time, which I feel like it, as, as I think that is like, that's when recruiting really starts is when you get your five-star QB, everything else falls into place after that. So I feel like we're almost just seeing the tip of the iceberg right now. Um, And then, like you said, like Bryce Underwood um, was, he's already visited what three times you said. Yeah. Three times the last two weeks he was on campus today on a Tuesday. Like the midweek visits are always like, I think kind of telling, like obviously he's from the Detroit area. So it's not that far of a drive, probably less than probably 30 to 45 from wherever he lives around Belleville. But Still, to get a kid up on a random Tuesday in March, not a bad sign. And the fact that he is connecting so well with Kurt Campbell, I think Kurt Campbell has proven himself at least to be a competent recruiter uh, in, in retrospect to his uh, the, the previous offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Michigan had. So I think the recruiting at quarterback has seen an uptick. Um, and I think you're starting to see more cohesion on the trail and just an elite staff that, that Michigan has put together. I mean – you know, you think about it, and Mike Hart might be – you could probably label Mike Hart as, like, the the the, the worst recruiter on staff. He just picked up a top 100 kid today. Right. I mean, that's that's how insanely talented this, this staff is at, at recruiting, and we've obviously seen what they could do on the field too. 
And I, th- I think uh, honestly, we're to the point where like the product is the, is what's helping recruiting. It's, it's the championships. You can truly say you don't have to have some unbelievable Chris Partridge guy who is just a great salesman, right? You, you can truly show everybody and they've done this in Schembechler. I've been in there. Like you there, we're like, you showcase the trophies, you showcase the Ohio state wins, you showcase that. And you can say, instead of like it being a, a pitch, a fever dream, like it has been for the past decade, you can go in there and say to a kid, like we're come be a part of this championship caliber program. And it's not like, ha ha jokes, funny, funny. Right. It's like, we, we don't have to, we're, we're about what, what we talk about right now. Like we really live it and we, you know, we're starting to actually produce on the field that like you're saying, I mean, that's huge. I mean, I also recruits did we lose out to not even not that long ago. Yeah. I'm thinking like guys that would have transformed our program, like Zach Harrison kind of guys, like those are the ones that stick out in my mind. And I think we actually have an opportunity to get some of those guys now. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that, that's why you're like, honestly, even on the defensive side of the ball, the 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 five star QB commits, and everyone forms around that because they think that that's the team to go to that's going to be the next like championship winning team. And you think about where we were last year. I think about where we're going to be this next year. I hope that we're going to be in the same position. Um, I also put out the tweet too of uh, the tide is. 1000% like turned in my opinion right now. Like that. I, I think that that get going, like you said, Tanner into Cincinnati and getting an Ohio state kid from Ohio that they're going to go ahead and after the fact, say that they didn't want him. I don't give a shit. I know you wanted him. There's no way you don't want a four-star running back that his family likes Ohio state. And he's from the state of Ohio. Like there's no way you don't want that kid. And you go pluck him. And that to me is like, all right, the tide has turned. Now Michigan recruiting is way up for 2024. Ohio State recruiting is down for 2024. Now we're still super, super early in the in the uh, class and in the in that. So I get it. But all I'm saying is, you have that going on already, and then, and this is not going to be an easy task. I'm not saying it's a done deal. So don't come at me and be like, oh, pull the receipts, blah blah blah. But you go win that game in Ann Arbor this year, and when Ohio State has to come up with a first-year QB and Kyle McCord or whoever, and we've got 81% Blake Corum, J.J. McCarthy, Donovan Edwards, and, and the whole squad back, they're going to fire Ryan Day. If that happens, they will fire Ryan Day. They're going to leave him in Ann Arbor, Lane Kiffin style, and it's going to be like, holy shit, Michigan is going on the same run that Ohio State went on for the past 15 years. and. That's what I'm saying on March 21st, 2023. And so if it if we get to November and it doesn't happen, don't come back to this. But if it does, come back to this. Somebody clip this, and I want to play it on repeat forever and ever. I don't think it's that far-fetched to say Michigan's going to beat up on Ohio State and Ann Arbor this year. Is it? Oh, oh, oh. Are we? Oh, I mean, oh. Talk to me. Nice. <laughs> You look at the returning production. You look at the transfers added. You look at the guys coming into their second and third year with the program. Think about a guy like Braden McGregor, who his his, his senior year is 2020, right? A little thing happened in 2020 that kind of made us all stay at home. And he was going through a knee injury rehab because he tore his ACL in his, in his senior season. And I think about a guy like that coming back with the, with his fourth year, third full year in the program after rehabilitation. Like I, I, I think of guys like him. Uh, I think of guys like Derek Moore coming on as a sophomore. Like Michigan has so much talent and so many guys that are just getting better because they've played a ton of football over the last couple of years. I mean, I I, I just I feel like Michigan is going to run the table again, man. Like we can we can say that too, which is like it's happened. I'm not I'm not stepping on a limb. Me and Brandon Justice one one day back in 2017 did a podcast. And I predicted Michigan to go 15 and 0. They went eight and five. So uh, I'm not, but it's happened already. Like we've seen it. And I just think where Michigan is as a program right now is the best spot that they've been in since I can ever recall. I was two in 97. So I don't, you know, I don't know those days. You know, I remember 03 
beating Ohio State when I was a kid and, and thinking like, yeah, this happens. And it didn't for, for 15 to 20 years. And so to be on the other side of that again, it's just so exciting. And like, I just feel where Michigan is as a program with, with the recruiting starting to pick back up and the, obviously the on-field performances, I mean, you know, 25 and three over the last two years and two of those losses are in the playoffs. Like I just feel like Michigan is poised if they play their cards right as they have been recently on the recruiting trail to really take the big 10 by storm and make this something that look, they're not going to win the big 10 every single year, but they can be the dominant program in the Big Ten like Ohio State has been in the past. And I think what's really crazy to me is I think they could be even better next year than they were this year, right? I think of certain things like um, like we all said it, right? The defensive line didn't have a ton of experience. Look how they performed, right? right. Now there's so many of these guys coming back with a lot of experience. Guys like JJ who missed the spring last year. Now, my understanding, he's got a full spring more or less under his belt. And he'll have a fall as well. So, I mean, I, could the offense be even better? I, I, mean, I agree with you. I, I'll say this to your point there. I think J.J. McCarthy is going to be possibly the number one quarterback in the country next year. I truly believe that he was just getting his feet under him this whole year. He was, you know, he they he was thrown in, not thrown into the fire, but like he was definitely thrown into a tough situation. And I don't care what you want to say. He didn't have support from anybody like, it wasn't he didn't have anybody experience looking over his shoulder being like hey i've got your back here's how it is like he was in an awkward position for at le- for all fall camp the first part of the season and then was on his own kind of like on an island w- because of the McNamara situation and so i agree with you Kalen. i think not only with just experience but him being able to throw in the spring and summer and fall and and get here I think he's going to be like, hey, I'm here, and I'm the dude. And then, I mean, you've got freaking Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards. Like, it, it's really Insane. unbelievable. Um, so, I, 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 and then, <laughs> I mean, we could do this all day, but, like, you've got almost the whole line coming back, and, and you're plugging in the holes that, that did leave. So, um, it, it's just crazy to me. Also, Kalen, I want to say one thing, too, while we're talking about Ohio State. I – I just looked at your mirror that is in the background. It kind of reminded me of when Urban Meyer uh, was on that boat or whatever, and his buddy was like naked and hitting the bong um, <laughs> in the in the background in the mirror, and he's like, "No, no, no!" And his buddy comes in and wants him to hit the bong. Unbelievable moment that just kind of gets like passed over. Like people forget about that. Oh, it's electric. Yeah, well, and uh, one thing that you said, Justin, that just kind of made me think of this, um, you know, they bring in Jack Tuttle as a grad transfer at quarterback, obviously is a God forbid an insurance policy. But the thing that you mentioned about having somebody to help him, like, it feels like it feels like when you have Kurt Warner in New York with Eli Manning, right? Like you have an experienced quarterback who's gone through a lot of different things and can be there to help mentor J.J. McCarthy. Like, I'm sure it was when, when, when Jack Tuttle came on board, it was like, look, man, this is our guy, obviously. And, we and want- I'll, I'll jump in right then, right here yeah. and let you finish your thought after. But Jack Tuttle told me, he's like, I came here so that I could learn. And my goal is to be a coach one day. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's what, what that was. That's what my thought would be is that, you know, he's a future coach. Right. But to have an experienced quarterback who's played in this conference, be able to help JJ, and look, I, I'm not going to fault anybody, right? Like you have your job taken because, you know, you don't perform and you also have an injury. Like that sucks, right? But to be able to have somebody – like when J.J. does J.J. things that aren't awesome and like in the Purdue game where he just rolls out and just flings it because he's like, I think I think Ronnie's down there. Yeah. Like just to have somebody to kind of help work through those moments is going to be so huge for his growth. And thank you for pointing that out because, I, you know, obviously I knew he was more of an, an insurance policy uh, if, if anything happened. But, you know – having him there with his leadership is I think crucial. And I think that's a extremely underrated storyline heading into, uh, you know, heading into the end of spring ball. And as we get into summer workouts and then obviously fall camp. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, I, I, I think that it's, it's just, it's something that like, 
you think about it, he's still a young kid. He was 19 almost all of last year, right? And so, like, I don't think people, because he carries himself so well, they forget about that part, right? And so, like, there just aren't that many guys in this country that go like that without a mentor, without somebody there. And I think a Jack Tuttle, to your point, is going to be really important uh, for his growth. Um, and just like, just like getting it, I think going through that stuff for the second time is so like, oh shit, I've seen that before, you know, mm-hmm. like in, in the game speed, he talked to me about this as well, uh, where he was like, I didn't know what game speed was until like that Iowa game, essentially, because they played against dog shit opponents. We can, you know, rag on ourselves for that too. But like, he didn't, he didn't go through, he's like, even fall camp was, is kind of half speed. Right. And so like he, once you start getting that and like you get the rhythm, that's when you start making, making really good plays. So like I, I would expect, especially with Sharon Moore in there and Kirk Campbell helping out as well, um, which he absolutely loves Kirk Campbell. And I don't think we can say the same about Matt Weiss. Um, so I think that'll be a big difference as well. Um, and I think that, uh, I expect to have it be more, obviously we're going to ground and pound because we've got two of the best running backs in the country, but I expect to see a lot of JJ uh, this year and us throwing the ball. One last thing that I was going to say before I turn it back over to you guys, somebody put it out on Twitter. The difference in Donovan's, one of Donovan's runs against Ohio state was JJ pulled a, an end over because of his fake. And that doesn't help happen if it's not JJ in there. And so like, there's a lot, a lot of little shit that he does that uh, helps a ton over more than just having a great arm. Yeah, that was. I mean, both those touchdowns. I think his the threat of his his legs sucked those backers in, sucked the ends in, um, and they did that same thing happened against Penn State on the two long touchdowns that Blake and Donovan have. Uh, you yeah, know, I think back to back plays from scrimmage. It's just that threat of JJ running, and I think just a you know third year in the program, second year as a starter. Like we talked about it when we had, uh, we had Max on and from PFF. And I, and I think like the sky is the limit with this kid, man. I mean, that's the crazy part. So it's going to be, it's going to be very fun uh, spring game. I hope, I hope to see JJ just kind of sling it around, honestly, just for fun. I don't really care. That's the only thing I really want to see from the spring game, you know? Hey, yeah, Davis I, Warren season. Ooh, Davis Warren. Ooh. Jack Tuttle too. I, I want to see the guys. I want to see the guys eat. You know, I was with Davis today. He's a dog. He's just like, he's the nicest kid as well. Um, I mean, just like the nicest kid. And I, I hope the best also, like, he's a guy, like, I expect that he could be a starter at some point here too. Like dude is, is legit and he is filled out a lot. And so like people forget he played his senior year, like half the senior year. And the other half he couldn't play because he was so weak. He was like so skinny. He was like 140 pounds. So um, yeah, we dude. The one time I think it was when we had Max on and we went through like one position group for 45 minutes and then still had to talk about the rest of the team. It's just kind of crazy. I'm excited to see all these guys in this spring game. I know not everyone's gonna play, but like I I'm I'm pumped to see him. I'm just pumped to be back in the big house, dude. I mean, Absolutely. beers with the boys, you know, like just in the way that football players need a spring practice to kind of get into game shape. Like my spring practice is like brunch, but the weather sucks. So now my spring practice is the spring game. And like, I got to make sure I'm in shape for, for, you know, September, August, whatever, whenever the season starts, like I need to make sure that I can handle myself with the fellas. Absolutely. I agree with that. It definitely is like, uh, yeah, you need to, you need to make sure. You can't go too hard because you know you're not in playing shape, right? Like, you know you're not quite there yet, so you got to peel it back a little bit. Uh, but you you still got to know – you got to test the, test the limits a little bit to see, like, hey, are we going to be able to get back there come September? Are we going to be able to throw back maybe 15 beers in a day? It's our you think spring about game. it. Our spring game. No, absolutely. And you think about it too, though, like through summer – you know, you have the occasional beers here and there. Maybe it's, maybe it is brunch. Maybe it's seven thirty, and like you know, I'm gonna have something light, have a hazy IPA with my meal. Like, and you prepare yourself for the season. But like, you know, we've had March Madness, we've had 
if I say Patrick's Day, but I just think you got to have that one like Saturday, like early drinking session to make sure you're, you're, you're keeping your muscles in, in shape. Yeah. I also will say too, it was like sunny <laughs> in 57 today. Wouldn't hate that. Wouldn't hate that. Please. Ooh. At God, please. Um, I'm not going to say that we, we would ever have weather issues because we're not going to, we're not going to talk about that. I've been to too many spring games at, at Michigan Stadium, man. Like there was one time, I think it was, uh, I think it was when Devin Gardner was a true freshman going through spring practice. It like sleeted, and it was just like, I'm, I'm out of here, man. Like it was like 37 degrees and just like sleeting, raining, kind of snowing, which is awful. Yeah, I. We don't need that. I will say, in, in this is like this may be bad vibes. Jack would call this bad vibes for sure. Um, but thank God he's not here. We're going to beat the shit out of him anyway. Um, is <laughs> like just tough weather, not bad weather in the spring game. Doesn't hit quite like bad weather in like November, you know, the Nebraska game. Oh, I had to buy some gloves from the M den inside the stadium because my gloves were wet and it was so cold. Yeah. But you were still like, probably, you know, Hey, I don't really care. Cause I'm here yeah, we- and, and we're, Eight and zero or nine and zero or whatever it was, and like it doesn't even matter. No, it doesn't. And we were about to go to Italy for the honeymoon, so like I was on. I had amazing vibes at that point. Like I was just like, cool. We're just gonna roll Nebraska, you know, and and move on with our lives, and uh, you know, go on to the Illinois game and then Ohio State. So like that was, yeah, that that game hit very hard, uh, just in a great way. You're right, though. Spring game, no. There- nice weather. Little little teaser too. There may or may not be a pep rally in Chrysler before the game that I may be coordinating. So um, there also may or may not be Coach Harbaugh there and JJ and Blake and Donovan um, and a lot of other athletes. So just a little tidbit. Just we may in. we may or may not drink twenty seven beers, you know, between the three of us uh, by noon on the spring game. We I, may or may not do that. Who who's to say what we do? I can't predict the Cannot future. Cannot confirm or deny. No. Yeah. I I I can't predict the future. Um there's a there's just you know, there are a lot of factors that go into that. So we'll we'll see. Um the only thing I can confirm is that you can follow us at Blue by 90 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Blue by 90 Podcast on YouTube and Blue by 90.com. We appreciate you. Go blue. Go blue. Go blue.